Sales projections will help you set goals and manage your progress. Keep in mind that every projection for up to a year is a promise of delivery. We'll have that to you in November. So you should have a clear line of sight to being able to achieve these numbers. Of next year. Don't bother going into detail for sales forecasts over five years. We'll get that to you in five years. Just use rough estimates, balancing between being visionary and ambitious of your company potential and realistic of what you can achieve. Give or take a year or so. There are two main approaches to market sizing, top down and bottom up. Bottom up is more crucial in your early years when you need to have a high degree of certainty of the numbers you can achieve. 278, 279, 280, 281. While top down is more helpful in later years when you need to have a rough estimate. Yeah, no, just give me a ballpark. Both are critical for every year though to be able to check for gaps in logic. Ooh, there's one. A bottom-up approach builds up to your market size through small assumptions of what can be delivered, sometimes called counting noses. I've got your nose. Don't do that. This is from both the side of how many customers you'll be able to reach, plus how much of your product you'll be able to produce and deliver. This will require some primary research, so you'll have to get out there and do some learning. Bye, babe. I'll be home for dessert. The top-down approach takes the total market and estimates your potential market size. This can be done with some secondary research online. Time to check the interwebs. And making assumptions about sizes of market segments to get to your target market. The key here is to make sure that you don't size the market so large that you'd only be getting less than 5%. Know your market well enough to be able to be reaching more. Let's look at an example. Either is an app that allows people to crowdsource fashion decisions. Their customers are boutique clothing stores, where either allows these businesses to learn more about the clothing preferences of their customers. Bottom-up market sizing. If you estimate that in the first year, you'll have 200 stores as customers. 200 stores. With an average spend of $40 each. 40 per store. You'll achieve $8,000 revenue in the first year. What was that last number? In year five, if you have 12,000 stores as customers, 12,000 stores, generating $200 in average revenue each, 200 each, your revenue would be $2.4 million. $2.4 million? Woo! This calculation allows you to then understand the operational logistics that would be required each year to reach your target stores and revenues through the business development, user acquisition, and service features. The top-down approach helps check the five-year projections. We'll start with the total expenditure for clothing advertisements of $1 billion. A billion dollars? Since the company is targeting just small businesses and startups, this brings us to $100 million, since these companies account for 10% of the total spend. We should then consider only the portion of this spend that's on mobile advertising, bringing it to $30 million, 30% of the advertising budget. Therefore, a revenue projection in year five of $2.4 million is reasonable since it's just short of 10% of small business mobile marketing spend per year. As either captures more of this smaller market, they can consider growing to reach larger businesses. While we're thinking about revenue models and sales projections, let's look at a few other aspects of finance you should know. Gross profit. Ugh, gross. This is how much profit you have left after the direct cost of developing your product. The direct costs are sometimes referred to as the variable cost or COGS the cost of goods sold. These are the only ones to include when calculating your gross profit. Net profit. This is the profit that remains after factoring in all costs, both the direct costs included in gross profit plus indirect costs, sometimes referred to as fixed costs, such as sales and marketing, office space, or any other expenditure that's not directly related to developing your offering. Break even. Your break even calculates how many customers you need to be able to recover your initial fixed costs. It can be helpful to know this number of customers to then get an estimate of how long it will take you to break even. Will it take months, years? Cost of customer acquisition. This is the average amount of money that you'll need to spend to acquire one individual customer. In this calculation, it's important to include the cost of customers that didn't purchase. If you spend $1,000 on sales and marketing to reach 10,000 potential customers and 10 of them actually purchase, 
What's your cost of customer acquisition? Ooh, 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 I know this one. The answer is $100. You didn't give me a chance to answer. It doesn't matter how many potential customers you reach, it only matters how many purchased. You want the total revenue from a customer to be at least three times your cost of customer acquisition. This means that if it costs you $100 to acquire a customer, your revenue per customer should be at least $300. We're at $30 per. What's your coca?